Let's construct the Bell basis. In the previous video in the quantum mechanics playlist, we investigated a quantum circuit consisting of the Hadamard gate and the controlled knot gate. We saw how this circuit can be used to turn the two qubit computational basis states into the Bell basis states. In this video, we're going to work with Dirac notation instead of using the matrix representations of operators. Let's begin by initializing a two qubit system in the computational basis state 0, 0. We can denote that by 0 in a ket and another 0 in a ket. So this can also be written as this ket tensor product with this ket over here. We could write the tensor product sign in between. We could also write this as a single ket with the label 0, 0. All of these are different notations for the same computational basis state. This means we're preparing qubit 1 and qubit 2 in the state 0. So by convention, we're going to have qubit 1 on the left and qubit 2 on the right. Because we're only dealing with two qubits, the order is sufficiently clear to determine which qubit we're dealing with. If you're dealing with a more general system with many qubits, it may be more convenient to put some little labels in the subscript, and then we'll tell you which qubit you're dealing with. But this is sufficiently clear. We just have the order, which tells us that qubit 1 is on the left and qubit 2 is on the right. The first thing we're going to do to this computational basis state is apply the Hadamard gate to qubit 1. So that means we have to take the Hadamard tensor product with the identity. Why do we need to do this? Well, we're dealing with a two qubit system. So qubit 2 needs to remain unchanged. That means the identity is going to act on qubit 2, and the Hadamard gate is going to act on qubit 1. And that will produce the following state. This zero cat over here, the first one, is going to get turned into 1 over the square root of 2 times the sum of the 0 ket and the 1 ket. And this 0 ket over here is going to remain unchanged because the identity is acting on it. So we're going to get 0. And this is implicitly the tensor product of states. So we can take the tensor product of this ket with this ket and this ket with this ket. And that's going to give us 1 on the square root of 2 times 0, 0, followed by 1, 0. So here we have 1, 0. This notation over here, where we have 0, 0 in the label, this state is equivalent to this state over here. So these two are different notations for the 0, 0 computational basis state. But because we've acted on this state with the Hadamard, tensor product the identity, we have produced this resulting state. And it is a linear combination of two computational basis states. The next thing we need to do is consider the controlled NOT gate. So the controlled NOT gate is going to act on this. And the controlled NOT gate can be denoted as CX. And we can also specify which qubit is the control and which is the target. In this case, the control qubit is qubit 1 and the target qubit is qubit 2. And what is this controlled NOT gate going to do to these states? Well, the 0, 0 state is going to get mapped to 0, 0. So it will remain unchanged. But this 1, 0 state is going to get flipped to 1, 1. So 1 on the square root of 2 times 0, 0 plus 1, 1. That is going to be our resulting state. You can see that over here, the first qubit is 0. So that means this acts as the identity. But over here, we have the first qubit being 1. So because this 1 is over here, that turns on this gate. It acti activates it, and then it turns this 0 into a 1. So it's acting just like a bit flip. It's a controlled bit flip, or a controlled not gate. And this state over here, we can denote as phi plus. It is one of the bell states. 
Next, let's prepare this two qubit system in the state 0, 1. So we're initializing qubit 1 in the state 0, and we're initializing qubit 2 in the state 1. What is this Hadamard tensor product identity going to do to this state? Well, if we consider what happened up here, it's going to be exactly the same for this part, but this second qubit is going to be different. So let's have a look and see what happens. So the zero is going to get mapped to one over the square root two times the sum of zero plus one. And this second qubit is going to remain one. So we have the one kept. And now we can perform the tensor product and that's gonna allow us to construct one on square root two times zero one plus one one. We have one, one. And what is the controlled not gate going to do? So if we consider this controlled not gate, we'll write this in blue over here, the controlled not gate is going to produce another state. So the controlled not gate is going to leave this state alone. Here we have a zero, so the controlled not gate is going to act like an identity on the target qubit. But over here we have a one. This first entry is one. So that means we're going to have one, one turning into one, zero. So it's just like what happened over here. These guys get swapped uh, between each other. It's just like a bit flip. So we're going to get one on the square root of two times, first we have zero, one, and then we're going to have one, zero. So this one has remained unchanged, but this one has been flipped. And we can also write this as psi plus. So here we have phi plus, and here we have psi plus. These are the Greek letters phi and psi. Next, let's initialize this two qubit system in the state one, zero. So what is going to happen now? Well, first we need to consider this Hadamard gate. So what is the Hadamard gate going to do? Well, the Hadamard gate is going to turn this one into one over the square root of two times zero minus one. So instead of a plus sign, we have a minus sign over here. That is what the Hadamard gate does. And this second qubit is going to get acted on by the identity, so it's going to remain zero. And then we can perform the tensor product. That's going to give us zero, zero, that's this state, minus one, zero, minus one, zero. Now let's see what the controlled not gate does. So the controlled not gate is going to leave that zero zero state alone. But this one zero state is going to turn into a one one state. So let's write that over here. We're going to get one over the square root of two times zero zero minus one one. So again, this state is left alone by the controlled knot, but this state is flipped. So one zero goes to one one. And we can write this as phi minus. You can see the only difference between phi minus and phi plus is a sign between these uh, terms over here. So that sign can be thought of as a relative phase because minus one you can think of as a complex exponential factor. So there's a relative phase between these two terms that is not present in this state. That's what makes these states different. Finally, let's prepare this two qubit system in the state one, one. So what is that going to do? Well, first, let's have a look at what the Hadamard gate does. And the Hadamard gate is going to do exactly the same thing that it did to this one. So the Hadamard gate is going to give us the linear combination one on square root of two times zero, minus one. And this one over here is now going to be a one state. So instead of a zero, we have a one. And if we perform the tensor product, we're going to get one on the square root of two times zero one. And over here, we're going to have minus one, one. So minus one, one. And now let's see what the controlled not gate does. So what is this controlled not gate going to do? This zero one is going to remain unchanged. 
but this one one is going to get flipped to one zero. So we're going to have one on the square root of two times zero one minus one zero. And this has the opposite sign to what we have up here. So we can call that the psi minus state. So we have just constructed the Bell basis. And one way we can actually write this Bell basis is using the following notation. We can group these guys in pairs. So we take this phi plus and this phi minus, we can write that as a pair. So first, we can take phi plus or minus, so we'll write this uh, more generally, so we have two possible states over here, phi plus and phi minus. We can write that as one over the square root of two times zero, zero, plus or minus one, one. And if we want to write this as a matrix representation, we can write this as a column vector with this coefficient of one on square root of two, that is a normalization coefficient. And the entries are going to be one, zero, zero, plus or minus one. So these are the entries in this uh, column vector notation. And this, this vector is expressed in the computational basis. So that's this computational basis. It's a computational basis for a two qubit system. And we're using that to construct a matrix representation of the phi plus or minus states. Next, let's have a look at the psi plus or minus states. So the psi plus or minus states are going to look like this. Psi plus or minus is one over the square root of two times zero one plus or minus one zero. And we can write that as a matrix representation. We're going to have one on the square root of two times a column vector, and zero is going to be the first entry, one is the second entry, plus or minus one is the third entry, and the last entry is zero. So you can see that uh, for the phi cases, for phi plus or minus, we have the first and the fourth entry. These are the zero, zero, and the one, one entries. But in this case over here, we don't have those entries appearing. Instead, we have the zero, one, and the one, zero entries appearing. And we're putting this plus or minus in here to account for both cases. We're counting for both phi plus and phi minus, and psi plus and psi minus. One thing that I want to demonstrate uh, using these column vectors over here, this matrix representation of the Bell states, is the fact that they are orthonormal. The Bell basis is an orthonormal basis. That means that they have all of these uh, vectors in this or all these states in this orthonormal basis, they have to be normalized and they have to be mutually orthogonal. And we can see that by taking inner products. First of all, let's take the inner product of this uh, phi state, phi plus or minus, with phi plus or minus. What is that going to give us? Well, we're going to get one. Why is that the case? Well, if we take either plus or either minus, it has to be the same sign. We take this and we uh, take the transpose and also take the complex conjugate. Uh, we can notice that the complex conjugate is not going to do anything because all of these entries are real. So we just take a row version of this and a column version and we can evaluate the inner product. We're going to see that we get one on square root of two squared, which is one half. And over here we get plus or minus one on uh, root two squared, which is also going to give us plus one half. So we'll have one half plus one half, and that's going to give us plus one. A similar thing happens over here. So if we, we choose this relationship, where we have psi plus or minus, and psi plus or minus over here, that is also going to give us one by the same reasoning. Instead of uh, dealing with these entries over here, we're going to be dealing with these entries. And we're, we're also going to get one half plus one half, and that's going to give us plus one. But what if we mix up the signs? What if we use different signs instead of the same sign? What is going to happen then? Well, in that case, we're going to have zero as the answer to the inner product. So let's consider phi plus or minus, and then phi minus plus. So we get the opposite signs. That's going to give zero. That's because if we do this multiplication with this term over here, we're going to get a plus term and a minus term. And a plus and a minus, they're going to give us a minus. So we're going to get one half minus one half when we evaluate 
this inner product. And that's going to give us zero. And we're going to get exactly the same thing emerging with psi plus or minus and psi minus plus. That is also going to give zero. So this over here tells us that we have normalization. And this over here tells us that we have mutually orthogonal pairs. But we're only considering what happens when we pair phi's with phi's and psi's with psi's. What if we pair these guys with these guys? What if we mix together the phi's and the psi's? Well, we'll see what happens over here. So let's consider psi plus or minus and phi plus or minus. What is that going to give? It's going to give zero because over here we have ones where there are zeros and over here we have ones where there are zeros as well. So ones are always going to be paired with zeros when we take the inner product. And that means the entire sum is going to be zero, so the inner product will be zero. And if we swapped this order around, it would not make a difference. So if we put phi plus or minus here, and then psi plus or minus here, that would also give zero. And we have a few more cases we need to consider. What about if we swap the signs over here? So if we consider this relationship, so let's say we have uh, psi plus or minus and phi minus plus. That is also going to be zero. And if we have phi plus or minus and psi minus plus, that is going to be zero. So why is that the case? Well, changing the sign is not really going to make much of a difference. You're still multiplying by zero. If you multiply one by zero or minus one by zero, you still get zero. So what are all of these terms over here? In total, we actually have 16 terms. That's because we have four basis vectors and the inner product takes two basis vectors. So we have the inner product of one state with another state. There's four options for the first entry and four options for the second entry. That gives us 16 options in total. Four of those options are the inner product of a state with itself. And because this is a normalized basis, this is going to give us one. So this is actually four options. Inside here with this plus and minus, we have two options written. So this is a, a general way to, uh, to take into account uh, two different equations. When you see plus or minus, that is just writing two separate equations in one equation. You can either pick the plus or you can pick the minus, and that will give you the two options. So over here we have four inner products that evaluate to one. That is when you take a state with itself. That is the normalization condition. All of these other cases are if you have a state inner product with a different state, and that always gives zero. This means that all of the states are mutually orthogonal. If we swap the uh, order over here, we're also going to get zero. This is, uh, in general, the inner product satisfies conjugate symmetry. So that means if you swap the order of the inner product of this uh, bra -ket combination, you're just going to have to take the complex conjugate. But zero is a real number, so taking the complex conjugate is going to have no effect. Either way, you're going to have zero. So what have we accomplished in this video? We have started with the computational basis states for a two-qubit system. We initialized the system in these computational basis states, and then we applied the Hadamard operator to qubit 1. Then we applied the controlled NOT gate with qubit 1 acting as the control and qubit 2 acting as the target, and that produced the Bell basis states. We then expressed the Bell basis states as matrices in the computational basis representation. So these column vectors are the matrix representations of the Bell states. Then we had a look at the inner products that make sure that this is an orthonormal basis. So now we can say the Bell basis is an orthonormal basis, and it is a very, very special basis that is used in quantum information. If you would like to see more videos like this one, make sure to find other videos in the Quantum Mechanics playlist. You can find those videos if you click over here.